And what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy, Cheap Ludes. I said I wasn't going to do another video today, but I decided, you know what? Why not? Let's talk about the market in NBA 2K22, my team. So, limited edition packs did crash the market a little bit, but as is the case with, I would say, a majority of the overhyped promos or large hyped promos, they crash the market more in theory than they do in real life. And what I mean by that is the thought of these packs crashed the market more so than the packs themselves actually crashed the market. And we definitely saw that Thursday night. I mean, reporting on the uh, new leaks and stuff like that. I mean, we saw just the idea that certain players could be coming out, even though they didn't, uh, to end up crashing the market significantly more than the packs themselves did. Now, with that being said, let's actually look at the cards in the packs. And I'll go through which ones are worth it and which ones aren't. So right off the bat, both of the Sapphire cards are worth picking up. I mean, you can pick up Davion Mitchell and Dylan Windler for 750 MT tops, right? Dylan Windler is a budget sniper. This dude is absolutely monstrous. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is probably my favorite Sapphire card in the entire game. Like, I'm not joking. And maybe it's just like, you know, sometimes you get a hold of the card and, you know, people people say it's good, but then other people, it's just not quite the same. Dylan Windler, maybe he just clicks for me, man. But this card is nasty. And if you're looking to build any type of limited lineup that requires Sapphires in the immediate future or even deep into the game's lifespan, Dylan Windler is a guy you need. Same goes for Davion Mitchell. He's probably the best offensive point guard in the sapphire tier if not just altogether the best point guard in the sapphire tier i think like total he is the best in the sapphire tier he does lack some shooting badges that someone like jalen suggs will bring you but he brings you a lot more on the defensive end with like gold clamps and stuff like that ankle braces intimidator menace he's just truly one of the best defensive point guards at this tier and for 750 mt you should definitely pick him up Matisse Thibel is always like an early game beast. You guys remember we got uh, Ruby Matisse last year. He's also a beast. You can get him for buyout. You should absolutely pick him up. That's just my own thought on it. Kevin Hirter, some people like him, some people don't. I mean, look, if you're looking for a sharpshooting wing at the Ruby tier, I mean, you should definitely pick him up. I can't say certainly one way or the other if he's really better than... Uh, Tyler Hero, but he's definitely cheaper than Tyler Hero, and he's about the same kind of level of production. Sadiq Bay, I'm sure you've heard about it. All of these Ruby guys are worth picking up. These packs were so bad that all of these guys are basically like buyouts. So you should pick them up. All right, Tyson Chandler, I mean, he looks okay. Don't get me wrong. He's not terrible. He's a great big man, especially if you're over on next gen and you're looking for a cheap way to limit like D Robs and other super offensive minded big men. He's solid. But at the same time, I don't really think he's the greatest. I'm actually curious what his price is. The fact that he's still going for like over 5K is indicative of how bad these packs are. <clears throat> Kyle Korver. Kyle Korver is way too expensive, dude, to be honest with you. Like as much as I love Kyle Korver, because I've always been a big Kyle Korver fan in game, like the Hall of Fame blinders is nice. And while he is an effective sniper, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of difference between like what he's going to bring your team as opposed to basically what, what Kevin Herter and Dylan Windler are. It's interesting to note that they're all about the same height and they all kind of bring you the same thing. Like basically, if you like Clay Thompson, get Dylan Windler. If you like uh, Trey Young or Hero, get Herter. If you like Kyle Korver, I feel like this should go without saying, get Kyle Korver. So... Kevin McHale's okay. I mean, he's decent on next gen. Like, he's good in the post. He's just not really the best shooting big man in, in the game, period. He can play the center position a little bit. I prefer someone like Moses Malone because he's a little more stocky, a little bigger, gets more rebounds and stuff like that. But some people like Kevin McHale. He's, I just, I don't like him. My personal opinion. Bam is a great defensive center, but just look how little Bams there are. Like, that's actually crazy. Like, these cards are technically or i'm sorry these packs are technically still in the marketplace that is wild all right now let's get right into the meat of it dude the pink diamonds like first off paul george seems to have fallen a little bit in price or so it would seem but there's just not that many of them up 
it's actually crazy how little of an amount of Paul Georges are up. While the packs are, are they still in the actual market? No, they're not. They're actually gone. Okay. I wasn't sure because uh, I know like most most of the promos stay live for an entire week. But yeah, the limited edition ones do not. Jason Kidd is actually a really good defensive point guard, to be honest with you. He has an atrocious jump shot, but if you're willing to uh, look past that, he's actually relatively solid. Look, the reason I don't go into what badges you should put the on these pink diamond cards is just because most of them are badged out already at this point. If you do want individual like help and ask like an individual question, like which badges should I put on Paul George or Jason Kidd, etc., jump in the comments. I will help you out for sure. Now, looking at the limited limited edition ones, Marcus all looks great. There's just not very many of them, so he's going to be super expensive. I hate these packs, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I want to play with Sean Marion. Sean Marion's usually not very great in 2K, so people tend to overlook him. So I've always kind of gotten along using Sean Marion's jump shot and stuff. But guys like Arvidas Sabonis, same thing. Like, he's usually kind of slow, so people overlook him. So you kind of have to start using him if you don't spend a bunch of money. But <laughs> they flip that on their head with the uh, no... I was going to say no money spent packs, all money spent packs, literally the limited edition packs. Nah, all these guys who are usually unsung heroes that budget players use. Nah, now they're pink diamonds are only available for 24 hours and they are super expensive. See, Richard Jefferson is another guy that I would totally use, but he's too expensive. You know what I mean? Now, the market has recovered on a variety of guys. Uh, Clay Thompson being one of them. That why is this Clay Thompson going for 600k? Like, what did the what did this person put on him? Oh, okay, yeah, this person. Eh, you worked for your money, you get it. Clay has rebounded in price significantly. Uh, I regret my decision selling mine, but I mean, I sold them for what 180k, so I cost myself maybe like 20 to 50k, which sucks, but it is what it is. Um, Isaiah Thomas has also started to rebound a little bit. He's actually kind of floated right around 85 to 90K. So I'm actually shocked to see that. What is this? Why are you selling him for 76? Does he have additional badges? No. This one has eight Hoff badges. Why? <laughs> Isaiah Thomas is still one of the better point guards in this game. I don't really care what anyone has to say about that. I feel like that's pretty uh, uncontroversial. Trey's still relatively cheap. Um, his price has gone up a little bit. I mean, we did get the new tray that came out today. It's slightly better offensively, but it's not worth it at all. Dikembe, once again, I don't think he's worth picking up. I just don't like Dikembe, but I mean, if you do, that's that's on you. You know what I mean? None of the signature series guys really dropped. Like, Steph's only gone up in price, which is unfortunate. Uh, Jalen Brown's gone up in price, too. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of cards up at the moment. Most people either purged their collections or kind of did any number of things this weekend. Like this stuff is the cheaper of the two. And if you were going to buy a stuff right now, I mean, this would be the one. I still don't suggest doing it either way. Rubio's price is rebounded too. He was like 30K and now he's up to like 50, almost 60. We're also seeing a similar trend with not Dennis Schroeder, Kyle Lowry, who was around like 10K and now he's around like 20 or in this guy's case, 100, because I don't think he knows how the games work. Or he's, you know, selling MT. Not entirely sure. <laughs> now, these cards are really expensive. Dennis Schroeder has fallen a lot since my earlier video, which is good. He should not be 70K. If you're a big Dennis Schroeder fan, go ahead and go get this Dennis Schroeder card. He's decent. I mean, if you're asking me for my personal opinion, I don't think it's worth it, but... If you want to go do it, that's cool. Miles Turner, still a premier big man in this game. Still 70000 Still too expensive. What's this tray going for? There's not a lot of them, and he's still going for only like 40 k That's actually kind of crazy. I'm shocked. There's like no Kelly Oubre's out here, and I would actually use him at the two guard too. It's just unfortunate how expensive like he is for seemingly no reason. You know what I mean? All these guys are decently priced. Where's Tyrese Maxey? I want to key in on Tyrese Maxey. Okay, look, this card was a solid budget card. I'll be the first to say, it. I'll be the first to admit it, right? He was a very good budget card. The thing about a budget card is, is that card is only considered good for so long before the price raises too much on that card and he's not really worth it anymore. And I would say, without a doubt, that this Tyrese Maxi card has exceeded that limit, right? When he was 10K, 
he was a fantastic point guard, right? One of the best point guards you can buy for 10K. Now that he is 30K, I don't necessarily think that to be the case anymore. Like, I don't. Is Patty, how much is Patty Mills? He just doesn't look right in like anything but a Spurs uniform, if I'm being honest. Shout out to my man Tim for that. That's accurate, beyond accurate. Uh, is my boy Mike Muscala risen in price? You guys continue to sleep on the king, huh? That's how you feel. Is that a holographic Mike Muscala? Okay, I'm gonna have to come back for that. I think it'll be it'll be safe. <laughs> Justin Holiday, uh, I'm getting reports that he has comically small hands in the game, which I kind of need to see, but I refuse to pay over 10k. I'm gonna wait for tomorrow to pick this guy up. Any of these moments, guys, just wait for tomorrow to pick them up because they're still gonna be in the prime time packs when we get a new set, and people are gonna open them because I guarantee there's an NBA 75 player in there. So just wait, like he'll literally be 3K. Like he'll be the same price as like Furkan and Mike Muscala tomorrow. I'm dead serious. By the way, Furkan is actually really nice. I'm <laughs> like, I don't know what it is, but I splashed with this card so hard. You know, I was talking about Dylan Windler and how you just like, sometimes you find a card and you just vibe with the card. You know, you just splash. I don't know, Furkan, he has it for me. Jump shot 84. It's like, I don't like it on a manual quickly that much. So chances are I probably don't like it on Tyrese Maxey that much either. But something about my man Furkan with it. I don't know what it is, dude, but he really holds it down. Could be the uh, sickness talking. Could be having a complete fever dream, but I really do not miss shots with this Furkan card. Now, these cards are still super expensive. Now, this is just kind of a reminder. To, uh, there are certain cards you want to invest in when you see a market crash. Now, you don't want to make like huge, huge splash investments for the most part. I personally, it's not that I don't ever advise doing it. It's that I am a little too tepid when it comes to making huge market decisions in the middle of a 2K power balancing spree. When I say that, it's like I am way too risk averse to sit there and gamble on Paul George and try to get him for 300K knowing full well that 2k is in the process of blowing their own power balance as they do around this same time every single year so it kind of scares me to invest in the high tier cards at this point that's just me though but when it comes to some of these low tier guys absolutely like i think i invested in some pete maraviches and i think i bought them for 79k they ended up selling them for like 90 if i would have waited just an additional day i could have got 10 more k out of each pete maravich because now i could probably sell them for around 97 so i already got seven more k essentially so something to think about batums are gone up in price too uh, just a little bit they're probably down now because of the moments cards grant hill was another card that was going for ridiculously low he's still going for 69k that's actually the lowest i think he's gone at all mark aguirre is just so low but now he's actually up you can get him for like 10k before and now he's like 20k so guys like that that you know for a fact like I think I I know Wildmont was saying it for sure, and I was with him on this, is that when Kyle Lowry was 10K, it was probably worth picking him up because you could probably flip him for 15 at the absolute minimum in like three days. Stuff like that, when you see a card like Kyle Lowry, who's actually still pretty good, and it's a low enough cost that even if you have to sell it for what you paid for, you're only losing a couple hundred MT, it's probably worth doing. I wouldn't say buy 15 of them, but, you know, it, it's worth investing. Jordan Poole is another guy I'm kind of holding on to right now, which was a good move uh, just because his prices spiked a little bit. He was like 4K. The moments cards, if you just pick a couple up and then just hold them for a week, they'll like triple in value. Cole Anthony is the same thing. He was legitimately 3K, and now he's like not a crazy amount. He's like 5 or 6, but still <clears throat> really solid price. Rashawn Holmes was like, 10k and i mean now he's only going for 12 that's still a little bit of profit though it is what it is the nba 75 cards are not going for nearly as much as i thought they were going to even moses malone is kind of teetering out around 80k unfortunately david robinson exists like if he didn't exist that would be great now what i'm hoping to do tonight is i'm hoping to bid snipe a couple cards now that halo has released i'm hoping that maybe uh people will be busy playing something else I planned on doing that as well. So, I mean, I guess we'll find out. But as always, it's been your boy, Cheap Ludes, and I'll be uh, back with another video for you guys tomorrow. I'm sick, so leave me alone.
Peace out. No stream tonight, by the way, but I will be streaming tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll be feeling a little bit better. I just wanted to take the night off, so I hope that's cool. And, uh, yeah, man, take care of yourselves. Peace.